In this video of Oracle, we will start constraints. Once we are done with the table creation, a user can enter any record into it. But we want to make sure like whatever values user are entering should be validated. For example, if I have placed a column called salary in the table statement under the table structure, uh, the value of that salary column should not be in negative as we have specified that it will only take the numbers of a certain digit but you can anytime place a negative value in that and it will al also accept that. But obviously a salary in minus is not the correct data. Similarly, when I have created the uh, email ID or maybe a mobile number they must be unique so I need to ensure like if any particular email ID is entered or any mobile number is being entered and the user should not repeat with the same value so putting all those things in mind we can actually apply the constraint with the table so basically constraints will be used as a validator which will validate the incoming value if the incoming value is proper only then it will be allowed to enter in the table otherwise it will be declined with the error message if you want to create the uh, constraint you can either specify the name of the constraint or not basically if you specify the name in later when you want to disable it or enable it it is be easier because you have given your own name but if you will not assign any name oracle server will implicitly assign any name to that constraint once the constraint is added you can enable or disable that or you can also drop that constraint for example if you want that at a particular time only I don't want to work with my constraint with a particular constraint so I can disable that later I can enable that again I don't have to give the complete definition I will just pass the enable uh, keyword with the constraint name and it will be enabled but if you permanently want to drop a particular constraint you can do that as well using the drop keyword which you will see how to do that practically now while adding Either you can add a particular constraint at column level or at table level. Basically, when we create a table, we have already seen how we can create, like we will specify each and every column name separately. While defining a column only, if you want to pass the constraint description, it will be a column level constraint. But after creating all the columns, if at the last, you want to specify all the list of constraint that will be the table level the major difference between the column level and table level constraints is like at column level a single constraint can be applied to a single column only but at table level you can share a single constraint with multiple columns so let's see what all constraints are basically available which we can add so here you can see like not plural, unique, primary key, check, foreign key. These are the major constraints. Let's uh, check them individually. Like nautical constraint is something which will ensure on a particular column it will never accept a null value. For example, if I have an employees table, they must have a name. So on the column called first name, I can simply pass this not null constraint so that every time you are entering a new record you must pass a name unique constraint is something which will ensure the uniqueness of the records as in the example i said i want the mobile number or email id columns should have a unique value so in that particular situation i can pass the unique constraint but if there is a column who is representing your column in your table in a very best way you can actually make it as a primary key by the time you make a primary key it will be having a feature of not null and unique means any field which is decorated as a primary key must have a value and that must be unique so not null and unique both will work with the primary key but 
as I said, we should have only one primary key in a table. For example, if I'm talking about employees table, employee ID is something which every employee must have and along with that, it will also be unique. So, and employee ID is representing any employee uniquely, all right? Means mobile number is not an actual representation of an employee. Email ID is not a representation of an employee, but an employee ID is. So such fields should, can be marked as the primary key. Check constant will be used when you want like any particular coming value must be of a particular type. For example, if I'm having a column called salary and I don't want any value less than 5000 should be entered into that so I can pass as a check constraint. Similarly, if I have a column called gender which is accepting a single character that is M or F, M or F makes sense but if you enter anything like A, B, C, D, they doesn't make any sense. So those things can be validated by the check constraint which will ensure like a particular any value which having a particular condition satisfying will only be allowed to enter in the table. Now next is foreign key which is actually a part of referential integrity. Suppose I have a couple of tables that is the employees and departments. So any employee will be working in a department but the major list of the department must be residing in a department's table in a separate table so i want to make sure like any employee is working in a department which is there in our organization so to ensure that we should pass the referential integrity using the foreign key in our coming videos we will start applying each and every of these constraints individually.